The disappearance of Jeanette Tate is a missing person case in which a 13-year-old girl disappeared while delivering newspapers in Aylesbury, Devon, England on the 19th of August 1978. Despite extensive searches, Jeanette Tate's body has not been found and the cause of her disappearance remains unknown. The case is one of Britain's longest missing person inquiries and has been described as a murder investigation by Devon and Cornwall Police. The disappearance of Jeanette Tate remains one of Britain's best known missing person cases. Early life Jeanette Louise Tate was born in Taunton, Somerset on the 5th of May 1965. She was the only child born to John and Sheila Tate. At the time of Jeanette Tate's birth, the Tate family lived in the Taunton suburb of Wetlands. They relocated briefly to Cornwall before moving to Devon. Jeanette's parents separated when she was young, and her father remarried. She lived with her father, stepmother Violet, and stepsister Tanya at Barton Farm Cottage in the East Devon village of Aylesbury, 8 miles, 13 kilometers east of Exeter. After her parents' separation, Jeanette maintained regular contact with her mother. Disappearance Jeanette disappeared while delivering newspapers shortly after 3.30 p.m. BST on Saturday the 19th of August 1978. At approximately 3.28 p.m., two school friends saw Jeanette walking along Wheathun Lane, pushing her bicycle. Jeanette had delivered 14 newspapers by this point and conversed briefly with her friends as they ascended the lane. At the top of the hill, Jeanette mounted her bicycle and rode ahead as her friends paused to read an article in the newspaper they had been given. Jeanette would not typically have performed this newspaper round, and had agreed to do the job for one week as the paper boy who normally did the round was on holiday. Jeanette was wearing a white cotton t-shirt with her name embroidered in red letters on the left shoulder light brown trousers, and white plimsolls. Seven minutes later, the two girls discovered her bicycle lying in the middle of the road. Several newspapers she had been scheduled to deliver were scattered across the tarmac. Approximately 25 minutes after the two girls had discovered Jeanette's bicycle, John and Violet Tate returned to Barton Farm Cottage from a shopping trip to Exeter. The girls had Jeanette's bicycle with them and asked if Jeanette was at home. When John Tate said that his daughter was not at home, he and Violet, assisted by several friends and neighbors, began a search around within road for Jeanette. At 5 p.m., John Tate reported his daughter missing to Devlin and Cornwall police. Investigation within hours of Jeanette's disappearance, police mounted an extensive search. 70 uniformed policemen and 50 detectives from Devon and Cornwall Police, assisted by mounted police from Avon and Somerset Police, were assigned to the search. All ponds in the Aylesbury area were searched by underwater search units, and search dogs assisted police in their search of surrounding terrain. Devon and Cornwall Police discounted the possibility of Jeanette running away from home, as at the time of her disappearance she had no personal possessions beyond the clothing she was wearing. She had also left behind money she had been saving for an upcoming family holiday in her bedroom. The money collected from the customers on her newspaper round was still in her purse on the bicycle. The possibility of a hit-and-run traffic accident was also ruled out, as no tire marks were found on the road and her bicycle was undamaged. Kidnapping was initially considered a possibility, although both Devon and Cornwall police and Jeanette's family gradually discounted this possibility. That eyewitnesses reported seeing a maroon Triumph or similar vehicle upon within road at around the time of the disappearance, and police issued a photo fit picture of a man they wanted to question in relation to the incident. This man was described as being a very handsome individual in his early 20s with a pale complexion, short dark hair, who had been wearing a light-colored shirt. Despite the police investigation and the search of the surrounding countryside involving thousands of volunteers, Tate's disappearance remains unexplained. In 2002, DNA belonging to Jeanette Tate was found on one of her jumpers kept by her mother, which would allow her body to be identified if discovered. On the 25th anniversary of the case in 2003, 
Jeanette's parents John and Sheila both stated their belief that she is no longer alive. Police have amassed more than 20,000 cards in a filing system related to the case, which is stored at the Devon and Cornwall Police Headquarters in Exeter. Robert Black as the prime suspect serial killer Robert Black was convicted in 1994 for similar crimes involving the abduction and murder of young girls and was subsequently questioned by Devon and Cornwall police in connection with the Tate case. During the course of his job as a long-distance delivery van driver in the 1970s, Black had made deliveries in the Exeter area. In 1996, an eyewitness claimed to have seen a vehicle of the model he is known to have driven in 1978 at Exeter Airport on the day of Jeanette's disappearance. The police inquiries were unable to establish that Black had been in Aylesbury on the day of the disappearance. The Crown Prosecution Service decided in August 2008 that insufficient evidence existed to charge Black with Jeanette's murder. After Black's conviction in 2011 for the murder of Jennifer Cardi in 1981, a spokesman for the police service of Northern Ireland commented on the striking similarities between the murder of Cardi and the disappearance of Jeanette Tate. Devon and Cornwall police reviewed the case in June 2014 in the hope of finding sufficient real evidence to prosecute Black. At the time of Black's death in January 2016, Devon and Cornwall police were five weeks from submitting a file to the Crown Prosecution Service in which they sought a new decision on whether to prosecute him. The file was submitted in April 2016, and the Crown Prosecution Service said that due to Black's death, there would be no posthumous decision to charge him with Jeanette's murder. In August 2018, on the eve of the 40th anniversary of his daughter's disappearance, John Tate made a further plea for information about the case, saying, I am not even 100% sure Black did it. I need proof that Black killed her. He said that his rapidly declining health meant that he could no longer make his annual trip from Manchester to Aylesbury, and that his final wish was to give Jeanette a dignified Christian burial and to be buried alongside her. He died in April 2020 age 77, with the case still unsolved. See also Child Abduction Disappearance of April Fab List of People Who Disappeared. Notes. References. Further reading Blundell, Nigel, Bohr, Roger, 1991. The World's Greatest Unsolved Crimes. London, Hamlin. ISBN 9780600572312. Green, Karen Shalev, Alice, Leon, 2018. Missing Persons, A Handbook of Research. London, Routledge. ISBN 9781409468028. O'Brien, Susan, 2008. Criminal Investigations. Child Abduction and Kidnapping. New York, Chelsea House Publishers, ISBN 9780791094037. Warr, Ray, Tate, Tim, Richardson, Charmaine, 2018. The Murder of Childhood, Inside the Mind of One of Britain's Most Notorious Child Murderers. Hampshire, Waterside Press. ISBN 9781909766267. External links Officers Remember Jeanette Mystery BBC News, the 19th of August 2003 Jeanette Tate Father's Plea to Meet Child Killer BBC Inside Out Southwest, the 31st of October 2011 How Jeanette Tate Mystery was reported in 1978 BBC Archive Footage of the Investigation. Originally broadcast on the 26th of October 1978, Jeanette's disappearance remains one of the West's most baffling mysteries. Herald Express, the 20th of August 2015, the disappearance of Jeanette Tate. A series of podcasts by the Express and Echo from 2018, examining the disappearance of Jeanette Tate, requires iTunes. The disappearance of Jeanette Tate. A series of articles about the disappearance by Paul Greaves. DevonLive.com Genetate at the Doe Network.